Fate and Choice, Part 1 Free will asserts that we human beings have a range of options before us at any given moment, and we are free to choose the one that draws us without coercion or preordination. Determinism asserts that the all-knowing Creator sees what will be before it transpires, and so we are compelled by divinity's foreknowledge to choose exactly that. Quoting a 16th-century Kabbalist, Rav Isaac Luria, known as the Ari, Free will and determinism are both true, each in its place. Where there is determinism, there is no place for free choice. Where there is free choice, there is no place for determinism. With these words, the RE, speaking in the 1500s, presents a paradigm for grappling with paradox that modern physics has also adopted to address its own nemesis, the paradoxical nature of light. Light's irrational behavior has baffled scientists for decades. Sitting in this chair and sending light through this obstacle course, it behaves as a particle. Yet from that chair, through that course, it behaves as a wave. It's impossible for both to be true, yet it's even more impossible to deny the proof that it is, in fact, true. Scientists haven't resolved the paradox, but they've managed to work with it by accepting the irksome but observable fact that, in conditions where light presents as a particle, there is no place for its wave-like nature, and in conditions where light presents as a wave, there is no place for its particle nature. This solution echoes the RE's formula for addressing the paradox of fate versus choice. Thus, the first task in addressing a paradox is to find the sticking point and articulate its mutually exclusive assertions. And while, most of the time, there is no way to resolve them fully, it may be possible to sort them out to some degree. For example, a metaphor from science can help us do just that with our current paradox. Quantum mechanics is science's crowning glory. It is the most successful theory in history. It predicts with stunning accuracy the behavior of our subatomic world. There is one feature of this theory, however, that is especially useful in our present discussion. When observing how light behaves when directed toward a barrier with slits, quantum mechanics predicts the results with 100% accuracy. X% percent will land here, Y% percent there, Z% percent over there. Its predictions are always right. But when tasked with the job of foretelling in which of these categories an individual photon is going to land before it gets shot from the barrier, that, says quantum mechanics, is impossible to predict, and not for lack of knowledge, but because it is intrinsically unpredictable. This is where Einstein protested, God does not play dice with the universe. Einstein believed that if we could measure all the forces bearing upon that photon, we would be able to predict its individual behavior as well. Quantum mechanics said no, the randomness of this event is a feature of reality itself. Scientists designed an experiment that would test these two assertions. If Einstein was right, the results would be A. If quantum mechanics was right, the results would be B. The experiment proved quantum mechanics. The final tally of photons is predicted with absolute accuracy. Their individual events are unpredictable, and no amount of information can change that. Its random nature is built into the very fabric of our universe. This parallels the paradox of free will and determinism as articulated in Kabbalah. What is known and predicted with absolute certainty is the final outcome. Every sliver of soul will eventually scour its impurities, actualize its potentials, and cross the finish line, squeaky clean. The inviolate rule is no spark left behind. Yet which wormhole a person will carve out to get from here to there? That is not predetermined, but rather depends on our free choice. That does not mean that every choice we make is free. And even when a choice is free, it could still be that we're coerced to choose between, say, two options when theoretically thousands of possibilities exist. But it is still a free choice, even when we only decide between two roads, because, as Robert Frost observes, way leads to way. That simple pick might seem trivial in the moment, but as years go by and choices unfold, those two paths diverge more and more, and the difference between them grows profound. 
So applying the Ares formula to this first round of resolution, what is determined is the final frame. Every soul will accomplish its destined tikkun. In the place of determinism, i.e. the finish line, there is no free choice. One cannot opt out of one's destiny. Failure is not an option. What is freely chosen is the path we take from here to there. Within every moment, there is some place, called a choice point, where coercive factors are perfectly matched, and the only thing that determines which way we proceed is our genuine, authentic, and perfectly free choice. How do these two paradoxical truths, fate and choice, fit together? A metaphor clarifies. Just as a master chess player uses every move of his opponent to bring him, the master, closer to checkmate, so is Hashem with us. No matter what we choose, Hashem will use that choice to bring us closer to our final destiny, our last frame, our fully completed tikkun. In summary, the Ari suggests a model for grappling with the paradox of choice versus fate. In the place or phase of life where choice rules, there is no place for determinism. Whereas in the place or phase of life where determinism rules, there is no place for choice. As we learned, the phase of life where choice rules is while we are still growing, evolving, actualizing potential, and dissolving impurities. In short, while we are a work in progress. The phase of life where fate rules is our glorious, inevitable, and inescapable ending. The final outcome, our last frame, is the vision that arose in thought at the very beginning that inspired the Creator to bring forth our world in the first place. In the next installment, we will explore another way of applying the Ares rule.